Hey you up everyone, welcome to the video. Hope you're all well and you're all looking after yourself and your sound as a pound. Tonight's video is going to be the worst ever NRL commentators, or in my opinion at least. So it's going to be from any area and it can be sideline commentator, it can be the co-commentator, it can be anything like that. But I'm just going to give you a couple of commentators tonight who I think were the worst ever in the NRL. So, as it goes with commentators, it's subjective. So, what I might see, other people might think that they were good commentators. And other people that think that so-and-so was a good commentator, I might think that they're shite. I think it all comes down to, if you like the commentator's voice, the way that they say stuff, the way that they call the plays and all that. So, I'm going to give you about five or six commentators in no particular order. And I'm going to tell you why I think that they're the worst. And we're going to start off with the first one, which is Ben Eichen. So he was a, a commentator with Channel 9 back in the mid to late 2000s, early, two, early 2010s. Um, the thing with Ben Eichen that I didn't like is he was very... He'd point out the obvious in the, in the, in the commentary, but also he'd try to shoe on in Brisbane Broncos wherever he possibly could. Even if it was a match between Penrith and West Tigers, he'd go, oh, that plea that they just scored off there, it reminded me just of a Brisbane Broncos plea that happened about a week ago where Darren Lockyer threw a ball and I'd say, it's a Penrith versus West Tigers game. Brisbane's not fucking playing. Why are you mentioning Brisbane for? He'd try to mention Brisbane as much as he could and he was, especially if it was a Brisbane match, he was that biased that he couldn't listen to him. He, he would refuse to acknowledge the other team's superiority if Brisbane were losing. The second commentator on the list is Terry Kennedy. If um, most of you don't know who Terry Kennedy is, he was the commentator with Optus Vision. And I think he worked for Fox Sports as well in the mid to late 1990s. Um, Terry Kennedy, I just didn't like the way that he delivered the commentary. He sounded like he was commentating maybe swimming or golf, not rugby league. And then on top of that, there was also some things off the field that he said and that he did that I wasn't a big fan of. In particular, he was on the footy show one day, I think it was in the middle of the Super League war, or coming towards the end of it, and he said that there should be only two clubs in Sydney, so they should make South Sydney, Eastern Suburbs, St George and Cunulli and make one team, and they should make Parramatta, Canterbury, Penrith and make the other team and get rid of the rest. And then the following week, he was at Leichhardt Oval commentating a, ga a game there. And he said, Leichhardt Oval, how good is it? Wonderful suburban ground, wonderful club. And I'm going, you just said last week that you wanted Belmeen killed off. And if Belmeen were killed off, there'd be no more Leichhardt Oval. I can tell you that much, like. The third commentator, Matt Nebel. I think he's still commentating. I'm not too sure, as I'm over here in England. But he was commentating a few matches last year. Much to a lot of everyone's pain and suffering. Um, Matt Nebel himself is a former rugby league player. He's also an actor. But I've heard him commentate a few matches. And he kind of sounds like you've just dragged someone out of the pub and said, Here, here's a microphone. Start commentating on the match. He doesn't sound like a commentator. He just sounds like someone that you've, you've dragged off the street, given the microphone to and said, Ree Warren's off for today and we need someone to commentate and we've decided to choose you. The fourth commentator is Tom Waterhouse. So Tom Waterhouse was, you can see like a, a pundit slash commentator in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And if you were watching the rugby league back then, you couldn't escape Tom Waterhouse. He had his, um, he's a betting company and I think he had some sort of deal with Channel 9. So you just couldn't escape him. Even when the rugby league wasn't on, you'd hear the Tom Waterhouse ads. And I remember also in particular that in one of his ads he says, I don't know how they make the big players when it comes to rugby league, but I know how to get you a winner. And then the next minute he's on the, he's on the punditry, he's on the commentary team. And I'm thinking, he doesn't know how they make the big players, but he's on the commentary team. And a lot of people out there didn't like him. And I remember there was a meme once that said, because he used to see, I know what the punters want. And then someone had a photo of him with the microphone that said, I know what the punters want. They want me to fuck off. 
And the next commentator I'm going to mention is Kevin Walters. So Kevin Walters, good player, fantastic player, an okay coach, you could see. But as a commentator, sorry, he's not a very good commentator. He just doesn't have the voice, I think. He just doesn't have the personality to be a commentator. He doesn't really know how to call the players properly or how to... He doesn't know exactly when to chip in or when to chime in when it comes to the commentary. So I've decided to put Kevin Walters in this list. And a special mention, he was only a, a sideline commentator for a, for a brief period, but I'll give a special mention to Scott Prince. So Scott Prince, he only had a, a brief couple of games as a sideline commentator. And you can actually search for it on YouTube. It was a match between Cronulla Sunderland and Eastern Suburbs. And Andy Riemann was the head commentator and he went, and down to you, Scott Prince, for your thoughts on the on the match before it starts. And Scott Prince kind of froze in front of the camera and he kind of went, uh, I think uh, Cronulla's going to, um, uh, yeah, Roosters. And then he kind of just froze and then they had to cut him off and go back to Andy Raymond. And I don't think that he lasted very long after that. But um, he's one of those players where I think he thought that he could be a, a commentator, sideline commentator, and it was a very brief career change for him, and he ended up going on to do other things. So that's my list of my opinion of the worst NRL commentators ever. Tell us your suggestions in the section below. Tell us, did you agree with me? D didn't you agree with me? Who are your worst ever commentators? Let me know. Also, if you have some spare time, go over, to, go over to my Rugby League History Facebook page. I also run the Instagram page as well, which is doing smashing at the moment. Getting up to close to about 100 people liking the Instagram page and there's nearly 3,000 people liking the, the Facebook page, so I'm dead pleased with that. But go over and check those out. I'll put a link in the description below. And in my next video, I'm going to be doing some more shout-outs, so if you're interested in getting a shout-out, leave a comment in the section below and I'll make sure I'll give you a shout out but as always everyone look after yourselves catch us all later tatty bye